it's about oh five thirty, and I noticed this yesterday. I wasn't paying attention. It's a little, just a hair past where I would want it, uh, which is called Green Tip. This is a Honeycrisp apple, and it has never done good. I gotta get out and spray it this morning early because we're gonna get 15 mile an hour winds today. So I have just a, a short window to get this sprayed this morning. There's some damage from Sun's Called from its first year. And this tree is prone to cedar apple rust. And we have a ton of yellow cedar here and there in this area that are, uh, that are infected. It goes between the cedar and the apple tree. You need both to have the disease. If it gets it again this year, this tree's coming out, unfortunately. It's about five years old and it has yet to produce an apple. It gets cedar apple rust every year, dries, er, the leaves dry out, and then it looks sickly the majority of the summer. This is our, I forget what kind of cherry this is, but this is a cherry tree. And this has done fantastic since year one. Well, year one it had three cherries on it. Now it gets tons, but the uh, Orioles get in there and, and eat them if you don't net it. So I'm gonna be sure to net this this year. I pruned it in the fall, but I, I, it looks pretty good. And then the last one. We do need a few more trees. We took out a plum back there. It was just going outrageous and nobody likes plums enough to, to deal with it. Yeah, see this is nearly at the bud stage, but this, this is a Macintosh. And this one, this is its third year, and we got a, a fair-sized crop of apples last year. So we got a crop in the second year, and I missed some sprays last year, and it did quite well without the sprays. So this is a far easier to tree to work with around these parts. And there's some bull thistle. I gotta get around and get rid of that stuff. Invasive species. Oh, it's also called uh, Canadian thistle. All right, so I'm gonna mix up some mancozeb and get these trees sprayed. Okay. Four teaspoons. application. All right, got the mancozeb in the sprayer. Now I have to take the whole mess across the street by the house and fill it because I have no water here. There are my water lines. I don't know if you can see it from there. The blue stuff there is the water lines for here. That's another project for this summer. I got to get summer water lines going up and over. And I have a drain over by the window right there. So that I can you know, wash my hands, blah, blah, blah. Hot and cold running water outside of the house.
And there's the lilies that I transplanted a couple days ago. Doing quite well. Lilies are awful tough. Uh, it's pretty hard to kill them. But I was pretty sure I would kill some. But it doesn't look that way so far. They're looking good. This is going to be a massive garden very shortly. It's dead calm out here. And I'm spraying the roadside along the vineyard. This is the first time it's been dead calm and I can't remember how long. Good time to get this done. I was going to spray the pasture, but you got to do what you got to do. Again, the blue stuff is indicator dye, which is just a, a dye to see where you've been spraying so you don't spray stuff twice. And I'm spraying tricoplur, and the vineyard is right there. But luckily the vineyard hasn't budded out yet. And this stuff will be dry long before the winds pick up or the sun gets too hot. Both of which can cause it to vaporize. Well, the wind won't cause it to vaporize with this kind of a sprayer. It would cause it to drift, but if it was windy, I wouldn't be spraying. You can't spray this stuff when it's too warm. That's why I like to spray early in the morning. So I'll mix up another batch while it's still not windy and I'm gonna spray beyond the vineyard in the field right there. I'm in the north pasture right next to the vineyard and I haven't run across a weed yet. The little broadleaf stuff, ah, there's one. Um, good pasture management, keeping this uh, grass cut after the horses are rotated out of here. Uh, keeps the weeds pretty much completely gone. It'll go spritz one or two here and there. But I'll never go around with a big boom sprayer and spray the whole thing because it's just not necessary. This is all grass. This is the edge of the forest right here where it was last year. So this is all cleared. And the, I'll walk along the edge here. And then it curled up towards the vineyard there. So all this cleared land, you can see some of the early forest stuff coming up like the May apples. Um, I gotta knock that back and then they won't come up next year. This will be all grass. Well, I'm all done spraying for the day. Sun's getting up there and it's getting a little too warm for the 2,4-D and uh, Tricopler. So I gotta go blast some weeds with a blowtorch in the vineyard and spritz a few of them with glyphosate and then that'll be it for the day. I gotta go to a, a 4-H fundraiser, Goat World or something like that. Fundraiser with uh, tons of goats. I guess it's super popular, but I've never been, so that should be interesting. Oh, more tomorrow, likely more spring.